Russian President Vladimir Putin has assured leaders gathered for the Russia-Africa summit that his country will continue to support states and regions in need. The summit comes just days after Russia withdrew from the Ukraine grain export deal. It also follows an announcement that he will not be attending the BRICS summit in South Africa next month, at least not in person. Now we unpack this with international relations expert Dr. Charles Sinkala. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Sinkala, and thank you for your time. And not really off to a, a great start. Uh, with the Russia-Africa summit, considering that other African uh, leaders omitted to attend. Your reaction? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cindy, and uh, much appreciated for having me this morning. Uh, the various uh, aspects or, um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, what reasons, what other presidents has not attended, you know, can be speculated, you know, amid uh, the wars in the region of the uh, uh, Ukraine from Russia and the other aspects in terms of intimidation uh, by the West to intimidate African leaders not to be involved. And as well as uh, what you've mentioned uh, because of Russia pulling out of the grain deal uh, last week. And what does that uh, mean, particularly while the war continues in uh, Ukraine and the diplomatic challenges that this has also posed uh, with the BRICS summit coming up in August for South Africa? Uh, well, uh, it is an ongoing war, you know. I think, uh, you know, the world, uh, because of geopolitics and other global uh, institutions, uh, which are fighting the West, and I think uh, BRICS has been uh, uh, one of the organizations which has been seen as an, uh, an organization which is fighting the West uh, dominance in terms of the global and financial uh, market, especially uh, the financial complex of the uh, conventional things that we have known about uh, the the, uh, the the IMF and the World Bank, you know, to dominating uh, the financing of Africa. And I think Africa has been looking forward to another alternative of the Big summit, which is a, poses a bigger challenge in terms of the existence of the United Nations and itself as an organization. So um, I think, you know, it cannot be underestimated uh, the effect of uh, the BRICS uh, summit, uh, you know, which is going to be held in August. And I think uh, uh, President Putin has already indicated that he's going to send uh, his uh, minister, you know, foreign affairs minister to represent him. So that uh, institution and their process of uh, pulling up the agenda uh, continues. And I think uh, uh, the summit which was held now in, uh, in, in St. Petersburg, you know, clearly indicates the participation of Russia trying to assist Africa. But, uh, you know, I heard very closely President Putin mention that uh, he shall give about 55 uh, metric tons of grain to, uh, uh, to Burkina Faso, Central African Republic, Eritrea. And uh, those are the places which are what taunt, you know, where Russia has been rejected uh, because of the Wagner Group. Yes, and, and also countries that are still reliant on Russia for their military support uh, and which also is counted, um, you know, that, 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 that goes against the uh, silencing of the guns campaign in bringing stability in those areas. What does this meeting or the opportunity that is there to have those kind of discussions? I think Africa must negotiate on the table, you know, with a mutual understanding. Um, the Wagner Group and Russia in itself has actually uh, dominated to an extent that uh, such countries as the Eritrea, Central African Republic, uh, Burkina Faso and Mali, they can no longer pay the, uh, on average, $374 million, uh, which they pay in the pretext that uh, they shall be given uh, security uh, 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 you know, uh, support, you know, or prevent them to, uh, for any good details within those regions, uh, which we see most happen often. And now what these countries are uh, now relying on is the mineral rich resources that they have. Um, and I think uh, we have watched closely uh, the head of uh, the Wagner Group, Prigozhin, who mentioned that uh, the war in Ukraine it will, soon, will soon be over. Our play now will be Africa, where they're concentrating on. So now you see that uh, countries such as Central African Republic uh, are giving away their mineral resources uh, in the uh, in the exchange of uh, the private and military security company uh, Wagner to support them with the services. And these are uh, mercenaries who has been indicated by uh, the Peace and Security Initiative report, which has been released oftentimes that uh, uh, these private and military security companies are actually the ones who are causing the wars in those regions. And in the morning, they come to pretend to support those countries.
Yeah, but, but you mentioned the Wagner uh, um, insurrection and that uh, many had said that this was a, a, a threat even to the dominance of, of Vladimir Putin. In your view, do you think that that failed coup had made any dent in terms of his uh, a stronghold? Well, uh, in my opinion, you know, if you understand how Prigozhin came to light, uh, he was actually has been considered as a, a Putin's chef. He was a prisoner at ten. I mean, he was a prisoner at some state, uh, you know, uh, serving uh, life sentence in prison. And the Putin is the one who actually made him uh, to develop that military complex, you know. But uh, you know, uh, Putin wouldn't, uh, you know, um, afford, you know, to have a bad relationship with the Prigozhin. Also, Prigozhin, they have made conditions with him uh, that he cannot risk. I consider that as a stage, you know, just to show the West that. Uh, you know, even if Putin can be stronger within his Russian uh, circles, he also has got some weaknesses, just like in any other war. But uh, you can see how they have managed that. And I think uh, the many of the other analysts or experts have indicated, which I also agree, uh, that uh, it was actually the relationship which soured between the chief of the military of Russia and the minister, and as well as the Prigozhin, where they never supplied supplies, ammunition, and other auxiliary artillery in the war in Ukraine. Mm. But, but Africa obviously has to, in particular South Africa, has to strike a very delicate balance so that you, you do not necessarily annihilate or uh, the West you know, in favor of uh, the, the BRICS bloc. Uh, how do you see this playing out, particularly if Russia is not necessarily our strongest uh, trading partner compared to, to the US and, and uh, uh, EU? Well, uh, South Africa has played a tremendously very good role, as, especially in the formation of uh, the BRICS Council. You know, I think uh, among many other African countries, rely on South Africa as a big brother, you know, uh, to speak on their behalf. And uh, I think uh, one can also attest to what I'm saying in the recent uh, uh, trip where um, uh, 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 heads of states and government who represented uh, Africa, uh, headed by Cyril Ramaphosa to Ukraine and Russia, to go and just see and how they can call up those wars there that they affect in Africa, you know, and how he also mentioned and continue to say that, uh, you know, we can no longer go and uh, start begging uh, for uh, things, resources, or other issues that Africa needs, including the grain and the wheat, that uh, Africa should be considered as uh, uh, part of the, uh, you know, the, the whole global. Uh, Dr. Sinkala, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid we, we're losing your audio there, but we, uh, it just gives us a, an edit point. Um, so this is where we're going to have to leave it. Thank you indeed for your time. We're speaking to international relations expert Dr. Charles Sinkala. He's in Zambia, a uh, reaction to the Africa-Russia summit that is currently underway in St. Petersburg. It's uh, an hour's difference. So there uh, is now um, 9 or rather 10.38, uh, and the uh, summit is currently underway.